Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. This is going to be part two of my series where I'm going from Earth out to Jupiter, landing on one of the moons of Jupiter, and we'll be taking the very cool, the, the very awesome Orbiter uh, Aero Freighter as a part of this mission. And as I stated at the beginning of the first video, uh, the Aero Freighter is not available for general download, so uh, you don't ask me where you can get it because currently you just can't get it. Uh, the version I'm using here is just a beta version that's not available for download, um, and I've been—I was just fortunate enough to be able to to be able to test it out. Uh, so, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump in and continue on with our mission. So, previous video we did a quick look to see uh, what kind of date we could find to go out to Jupiter, and the date that I found that seems to tick some of the boxes that I that I want is a uh, 59735 which is uh, like what is that about a little less than 400 days from now and I was I was saying like this is just one possible date now anytime you set up something that's this far in advance before you commit to it what it's always a good idea to go into the scenario editor so control F4 go into the scenario editor and I'm going to set the date really close to this date. I'll say minus one day. So instead of currently we're at five nine three eight three, instead of that we're going to go five nine seven three four, and we'll just go uh, that, and we'll leave off the decimal. So that'll be like a day and a half before this point. In fact, let me actually just do one day. So I'm going to go point seven. So that'll be basically 24 hours before that point. So I will hit apply and done. And the reason it's a good idea to do that is because now instead of being, you know, 400 days away from that eject date, I'm now only, you know, again, about 24 hours away. And that gives Orbiter a chance to, to update. It gives tra Transex a chance to update. For these really huge, massive targets, it's not as big of a deal to do that because as I can see here, I don't remember exactly what everything was because I didn't memorize it, but I know the inclination changed a little bit, and I'm guessing the minimum altitude changed a little bit. And actually, one thing I might want to do, just to make sure that TransX has reread everything, is go to like the date, down to a really micro setting, and just do like a plus plus and minus minus, and I'm not really seeing anything change here. So I think I think TransX has had a chance to reread this. Um, if, you, if we were going to a more difficult body to reach, like uh, Mercury, that would be especially important to get as close to that launch time as possible. So, again, we, we, what I said at the, uh, in the other video was that we have figured this out, and I think this looks reasonable. Um, and what I would normally do, uh, in fact, I will do, because I do happen to have something to write with here. I'm just going to make a quick note here. My TOF is uh, 723, let's call it. My DV is, uh, let's just call it, let's 9.2, let's call it. And my inclination is about 2 degrees. So those are kind of some of the main things that I want to know. But how do we, how do we know if this is a good plan or not? If we don't have anything to compare to, we we don't we don't know. This might be terrible. We might look at some other date and get a significantly better time of flight, or a significantly better uh, delta v. We don't know if we don't have something to compare to. So, if we if we don't find something significantly better, we'll we'll take this. But um, I I actually knew, I do know from having seen some of this before that th this is not bad. Uh, it's not ideal if we were doing a DV freak mission this is not ideal but I, I it's not terrible either but let's let's pretend that you know we have no reference to go by so so we we have this and again some of the reasons we like it are for the low inclination because when we arrive at Jupiter we want to be at a, a roughly equatorial inclination and that's just so that we're in plane with the moons but let's go forward now and find another date that we can possibly use. And before we go forward with the date, what I would recommend would be to remove all of our plane change and just we want to use date and prograde, and then we add in plane change as the last step. 
So I'm gonna go backwards here, I'm gonna reset my plane change. So that's zero, and my outward is zero. So the only thing I have right now is prograde, and now I just wanna find another date. So we're just gonna go forward again in time, and ideally, uh, these two lines converge when you're exactly over top of, a, of the white line, and that just means that um, you will have little or no plane change. So let's go forward. And I mean, even just uh, a few days later, 20 days later, maybe we can beat it. So let's take a look at that. So we're here at uh, 59754. Um, one thing immediately I see that's that's not as attractive is that time of flight. You know, we just added 300 days, more than that, more 400 days. So, but if we were going strictly for Delta V, this is a little bit cheaper, but it's only 200, around 200, maybe 250 cheaper. And you got to ask yourself, would that really be worth it? Um, if it was a DV, DV freak mission where you're just absolutely laser focused on getting the lowest uh, delta v cost and absolutely it's worth it but you know if you're thinking well you know i'm taking a cruise liner essentially out to uh, jupiter do i really want my passengers to wait another 400 days just so i can save 20 cents worth of gas well it's probably a lot more than that but <laughs> but you get the idea and that was way too huge of a change um, so again, minimum altitude for the reasons we talked about in the last video would be around 300 on the low end for IO and about two gigameters on the high end for Callisto, but around one gigameter is a good, um, medium point to aim for. So here we have an inclination of nine degrees. Um, so now we might want to say, let me, let me see what I can do with my plane change here. And just to see if I can bring down the inclination a little bit. And that's probably going the wrong way, it is, okay. So with just a little bit of plane change, not much at all, we're getting our inclination way down. So let me go to a finer adjustment there. And now it's starting to go back up, so I'll leave it where it is, go to one of my other variables, do an adjustment, and that's bringing the altitude down lower than I would like. So somewhere in this neighborhood. Okay, so, so roughly in this neighborhood. So what, what is, so what are the differences between these plans? So the first plan, we had a time of flight of 723 days. Now we're looking at, you know, 1,168 sets, significantly longer. Delta V cost 8.94 in this one. The other one was 9.2. So we're only saving, you know, a little bit. And the inclination isn't quite where we want. We could dial, we can, I'm sure we could dial that down a little bit. So in my opinion, uh, the previous plan beats this plan because of the time of flight. So let, let's do one more. And so let me go to the date and let's go rough. And once again, let me get rid of plane change. So we're starting with just date and prograde. So we reset the plane change and let's find one more, one more time, at least one more time where we think we can make these things work. And as I go forward, now my separation between Earth and Jupiter um, is huge. Boy, I really wish I could hold down that plus key. But we'll go around until we find uh, one more date. But again, I just wanted to make sure I show the process so that, you know, anybody that wanted to, we'll skip this one because this isn't too much different than what we were looking at before, um, where we're arriving near the, the line. Because kind of what I'm thinking at the moment, I want to check that side essentially. But you can see uh, here, you know, the, the, the date and uh, the time of flight improved significantly. Um, and we're a little bit lower on Delta V than we were on the other plan, which was 9.2. So if we really sat here for a second, and let's just see what we can do really quickly. So we're down around that one gigameter, and let's see what we can do with the uh, plane change really quick. That's the wrong direction. And do we want to go minus? Looks like we do want to go minus. 
It's a lot of plane change, but it is bringing down the inclination to in the ballpark of what we were ever seeing before. Let's go here, maybe out to fine, and something like that. So again, it's not quite down to that two degrees, but uh, we would be able to fix that pretty easily. So just a quick comparison. So this the previous plan was uh, almost 1,200 days. So this is way better on time of flight. And this is a roughly the same delta V that we saw last time. So between the second option and the third option, this is a clear winner in my opinion. But between the first option, which was a 723 day time of flight at a 9.2K cost versus an 869 day flight at a, let's just call it 9K cost, uh, which one wins, that might be a bit of a toss-up. Uh, th th then you have to just decide what are you going to prioritize. Do you want to save a couple hundred DV at a, at, a, uh, at a cost of adding, you know, another hundred and uh, something days, or do you want to save the time? So that's, that's, that's the trade-off. But what I was saying is I want, I want to do one more of these on the other side just so we have that comparison to go by. So let's reset that. And let me actually do this. Um, I really want to stay inside the, uh, the, the virtual cockpit, but just because I'm not able to hold down that plus key, let me go ahead and switch over here so I can expedite checking one more time. So we'll go to rough and you can see, yeah, if I, here I'm able to just work much faster. So I'm just uh, essentially going forward in time until we're converging on this side just to have a, something to compare to. And there we are, we're lining up pretty well. So we'll go down to medium on the date and start adjusting the date till our minimum altitude's looking good. Uh, this is a retrograde orbit, which is the opposite of what I want. So I wanna at least make sure I change the date till I'm in a uh, prograde orbit. And then check my uh, prograde start by checking prograde that's very sensitive so there they're converging that's very sensitive at this point and now I will just check my uh, plane change to see what it would take to put this together on this date and that's going the wrong way with the inclination so let's go this way and again, we want a low inclination because the moons of Jupiter or are almost equatorial. So that's getting us a really nice and low, but I immediately see a problem, time of flight. But uh, so we'll ignore this one just because we can see that if we, it, no matter how much dialing down I do on this one, that's still going to have a time of flight that's absurd. So let me, let me just go around one more time and uh, just, it'll take two seconds. Let me reset the plane change and let's go around one more time here just to see how things line up on that side because I know that's going to bring down the time of flight pretty significantly. And let's take out some prograde so that minimum altitude is coming way down and we're arriving nicely on the line, taking out some of that prograde. And now we're gonna have to probably take out a little bit of time. Again, inclination's currently retrograde, which is not what I want. So we'll have to uh, adjust until we can fix that. And will that be taking out time or, yeah. So that's got the inclination now in the right direction. And check prograde. So that's the wrong way. That's helping inclination. And now let's check um, plane change. And I'm thinking we have to go. I, I don't know. I'm probably I'll get it wrong no matter what I say. <laughs> yeah, I would have guessed the other direction. So that's a ton of plane change. So let's fix that really quick. Mm 
since I just absolutely went the wrong way with it. Let me see. So let me get the let me get the the line in the ballpark and adjust here and the date. So again, right now I'm looking a lot at the inclination, trying to get that dialed down pretty low. So that's a bit confused on the white line. And let's go prograde. So that's going the wrong way. And let's try date again. Do we move forward on the date or backwards? So going forward on the date is bringing down the minimum altitude. So we do want that to be at least around 1G. But then let's focus on... So that's bringing down the inclination and that is boy this particular time of flight is or this particular time is pretty awkward it's hard it's hard not to get this polar orbit so I'm not gonna mess with this too much longer because I, I don't I'm not gonna use this but uh, so in fact one thing I could say is if you find yourself as I am right now uh, fiddling around with this extensively and not getting uh, results, you know, then you have to decide, do I just want to throw away this plan and, and go to another one? Or do I really want to sit here and try to force this to work? Because as I'm looking at these numbers, nothing here stands out stands out to me as being better. Uh, sure, the Delta V is the lowest we've seen, but the time of flight's not that great, and this Delta V savings isn't massive by any means. And so do we, do we want to, do we want to figure this out or do we just want to go to another, another time? And we could take this high inclination by the way, because again, we would have plenty of advanced warning to fix it later on if we wanted to. But now I'm just kind of being stubborn and trying to figure out why I'm having such an issue with this. If I weren't recording, this would be a little bit easier. That's that's helping. <clears throat> so let's overshoot that direction a little bit. And then, and then this way. So let's go that a bit to bring down the minimum altitude and then back to this variable. All right, we'll go with that. So something like that would be fairly, a fairly reasonable um, point to be at to be able to to be able to at least consider is this date any good and a quick comparison delta v is low lowest we've seen um but the time of flight's more <clears throat> so with with all that said um i just wanted to show you know how, how with a process that i might go through to to try to find a date and again you could also use external uh, software or websites to do it, but if you're trying to figure this out purely within the context of Orbiter, this is uh, this is a method that you could do. And so, what have we found? You know, three or four. And and if, if you're doing this yourself um, without the pressure of trying to record a video and commentate, every time you find one of these, uh, just on scrap paper or on a notepad file or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever, just make a note of the key points: the time of flight, the total delta v cost. Uh, make sure you make a note of the date. That way uh, you can go back to it if you decide you want to use it. And if inclination is important, make a note of the inclination. And once you build up a list of at least, you know, three or four dates, but preferably five or six or seven, I mean, the more you have, the better, then you can, you know, compare what which one of these, you know, meets my needs. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. That's going to wrap it up for this part. So when we come back in the next video, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I will have already reverted back to the original date that we found, the one that was about 400 days out into the future from the current date of the video recording. And I think we're going to fly that plan, but there's still more setup to do. So when we come back in that video, we will address those setup issues. So with all that said, if you like what I'm doing here, please leave me some comments and I will see you in the next part.